the very first level of the very first Sonic the Hedgehog game all the way back in 1991 has reached legendary status. One of the biggest reasons for that is the level's theme, Green Hill Zone, written by Masato Nakamura, which has got to be one of the most legendary themes in all of video games. And as I was digging further into this song to find out more about it, I noticed something peculiar about the entire level itself and how the entire thing is way more integrated with the music than you may have previously thought. Sorry, I know I stopped the second we get into this, but there's already so much to talk about. There is such a sick part of this that I never noticed, and that is the baseline getting into this. Listen to this. <laughs> it's so simple, but it's just kind of hidden there. Everybody's focused on And what you don't hear going on underneath that is Ooh, It's such a little slick baseline that just works us perfectly into the beginning of this theme. And then it just sits. Ooh, ooh, and it kind of does it again, but it's a little simpler the second time. So it just, we're just sitting here, right? And as we introduce this theme, the intro, before we really even get into the main melody, we have this. Right? And over this the whole time. have this sort of, uh, does this count as an ostinato? I don't know. And there's, there's just so many parts to this. We get that bass line kind of again, but it's a little different the second time going into the second part of the intro section. What an incredible melody, and it's so simple, and it uses really, really easy harmony. This is so easy to figure out. Check this out. So we have our melody, right? And the melody, of course, goes. We can all probably sing that in our sleep, right? And the harmony is really simple. We have an F major seven chord and an E minor seven chord, and that's kind of the only thing we do just to begin with. Beautiful harmony, right? And then all we do is we now keep it going in that same direction to D minor seven. And we let it resolve to the C major home base that we established in the beginning of the tune. In the intro, we kind of didn't even really touch on it that much, but when we go. We're really establishing this this C major sound is like our home base for the whole song. So when we go into our melody for the first time and we have what we're establishing there is that this F major seven chord is our four chord. Let's check that out. So C major scale. If we're calling C major our home base. One, two, three, four. There's our four chord. It's F. And we just build an F major seven chord on top of that. So it goes four, three, minor three, right? Um, e minor seven, so that's our minor three chord. Four again. So you can see we're just going four, three, four, three, four, three, and then just right on down to two, one we resolve it to the C major seven chord. It's a brilliantly simple melody and it guides us in that direction. We sit here for a second, we sit here for a second, and then we let it kind of continue on down. And then we're just gonna repeat it again. Now, there's all this stuff going on, and this is what I think makes this so brilliant. There's so much stuff going on underneath all of that stuff, or uh, rather over top of it. We have this counter melody, or, or just sort of an additional layer, and it only comes in the second time. Listen to this. Here's our resolution, and then... It's a little hard to hear, but we have... Oh, that one's harder to hear. Something like that, maybe?
So we have this really this long held out note up there and then so even in the middle there's stuff going on there's that line whoa <laughs> do you hear that little syncopated that little syncopated a minor outline listen to that there it is Check that out. That is such a little cool line. So you can see there's all these different melodies intertwining, happening on top of each other all over the place. We have a bass line, we have chords, we have uh, little counter melodies like that. And then we have this sort of overarching melody on top. Right? All of the stuff combining to create this really simple harmony, which is just four, three, four, three, four, three, two, one. That's it, right? So that's a full section and we do it twice, right? And then we go somewhere else. That is so incredible. So we could call this our bridge, right? This is kind of our B section. We had A, A, and this is B. So check it out. So after our C major resolution, we get a B flat major chord, down to an A minor chord, down to an A flat major chord, finally resolving to a five chord, right? And this five chord, it's a G sus chord, right? And we say it's a G sus because we don't have that B telling us that it's like, a dominant chord, right? Or even just a straight major chord. Instead, we actually put an F major shape on top, like that. And anytime we do that, I want you to take a look at what that does to the chord. Because if we just take a G chord of some kind, let's call, let's, let's say a G7. So we have a four note G7 chord. Well, we know if we make it a sus four chord, we're gonna trade out our third and move it to a fourth. So that's gonna give us that, okay? But we still have, now notice what we have here. We have G, and now we have a C and an F. So let's say we drop out that fifth, leave that out. Now we just have this shape. And then if we play the ninth of this G chord, one, three, five, seven, nine, but we make all those other changes. So make it sus, move our third to a four. We can even keep the D. We, we either could drop that or leave it doesn't matter because we still get this sound. Without that D in there, it sounds like this. And this is just, it's just F major, right? So if you play an F major chord over a G bass note, you get this really beautiful G sus sound and that's what we're using here. Check that out before going back. Four, three, two, one. And that's the whole thing. I mean, I, I actually think uh, instead of it being A-A-B-A, -A -A, I think it's just A-A-B and then it loops, right? Because as we know with video games, one of the most important components of any video game soundtrack is that it's able to be looped seamlessly and listened to for a long period of time on end, depending on how long it takes you to do this level. Now, let's go back to that bridge for a second because there's some really cool things happening in there. So listen to the bass line there, because yes, it's a B flat major chord. There's our melody, we kind of go C, E, D. But the second we hit that B flat major chord, we're moving, we're going places, listen. Ah! That is so cool. Okay, hold on. So what we're doing is the second we play the B flat major chord, we're gonna go down. So we go. And then we just jump right to our A, which is our next chord, which is A minor. But now once we've hit our A root note, we're gonna start going up. And as soon as we finish that shape, we hit right onto our A flat, and what do we do? We do the same thing that we just did with our B flat chord, only now we're doing it in A flat. We're going down. And that brings us to our five chord. So the root notes, the bass line of this particular section follows some really, really cool shapes. B flat major. 
A, a minor, <laughs> I almost said A flat major, A minor. Now A flat major. And that brings us to our G sus chord that we talked about just before. This is such cool writing. And we know that the hardware for these video game consoles, the Sega Genesis in this case, they were limited. It wasn't like putting an MP3 file into a video game and just being like, oh, here's the score like we can do now. They had to work with sound chips. They called these chip tunes often. And it varied between 8-bit, 16-bit, but you only had so many channels with which to write harmonies and, and counter melodies and all of the inner workings where it's like, I can write 90 different pieces in the orchestra. Here, you only had eight or 16, depending on what hardware you were talking about. So the fact that we're getting all of this motion, all of these counter melodies inside of this little package that kind of creates such a story harmonically and melodically, it's just absolutely incredible. I know we're playing it against like a beat and everything and it's it's upbeat and it's, but it's beautiful, is it not? Listen to, I mean, I can play this. <laughs> <laughs> yes, we're gonna start doing slow Sonic covers. Oh yeah. <laughs> My next musical release, Slow Sonic Covers. So this theme is already incredible enough, but once I started looking at the actual level itself, I was like, hold on, what? Oh man, the memories. I had this game for PC. First of all, there's the obvious one, which is the rings. It's just a C major triad. First inversion C major triad to be specific. Now, obviously that works because the whole song is in C major. However, once we're playing our melody, you'll hear that 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 ring sound works kind of no matter where we are in the melody because it shares common tones with just about every chord. In fact, I can only think of one chord in this entire theme that doesn't work. So let's look at how it works over every single chord in our melody. We start with our F major seven chord, right? Before we go to the E minor seven. So just those two chords there. Let's try that. So perfect, it works great. What about over E minor seven? Also perfect, it works great. And then we do that a few times back and forth and we go to D minor seven. Still works great over that. And then of course, over C major, it's gonna work. Now, what about the bridge? Cause we start going different places here. Check that out. It still works over B flat major because it just functions as a sharp 11. In fact, that's a beautiful sound. How about A minor? Obviously it works well over A minor, just being the relative minor of C major. Now, A flat is really the only place where it kind of doesn't work. If you looked at it like that, it sounds really cool because it's an A flat augmented sound with a major seven. So like A flat major seven sharp five, you could make an argument for that, sure. Even over the G sus chord, it works fine. So you have a ring sound that over every single chord in this theme, except for kind of one, it works really well. So our ring sound is integrated into the music. Let's keep going. Check that out. That's literally just a C octave. That's it. It's a C, it's a C. So yeah, that works perfectly as well. What else? C, A, perfect, right? This whole thing is just one, even that. Starts on a D, ends on a G. Listen to that again. <laughs> I mean, it's like every single sound almost was integrated to match with the music. I don't know if this was entirely on purpose. You gotta think how clever they are working on this game. I mean, it had to have been a thought, right? I would assume it was done on purpose, but it's just incredible to me that so much of the stuff is integrated into the music. It all just flows together so well. So I was already blown away by the theme of this thing. And then once I went in further and I saw, I was like all the sound effects even integrate into the music. They're all in tune. This is just absolutely incredible. And in 1991 for the Sega Genesis,
Jesus, come on. Now, obviously this soundtrack was loaded with other incredible tunes, but I think it's Green Hill Zone that has really established itself as an absolute legend in all of video game history. But I wanted to break this down and explain some of the incredible harmony that Masato Nakamura used to write this incredible theme. And if you wanna know more about how to do all of this stuff and how to play this kind of stuff on the piano, or if you just wanna get your journey started, well, for the holiday season this year, we are running a sale of over 70% off. Whether you wanna grab our entire library or one of a couple smaller bundles that we've set up depending on where you are in your musical journey. We have a beginner bundle and a slightly more intermediate bundle if you have a little bit of experience already. But if you wanna grab the entire thing, it's one giant bundle and it's over 70% off now through the end of the year. And that is the best way that you can get your musical journey started today. We're gonna to start at the very beginning, just getting you to play some things on the keyboard. And we're not even gonna talk about music theory or what even the notes are at all. I just wanna get you playing because that is the biggest barrier that often causes people to stop playing when they start. So they wanna start playing the piano. Maybe you've been in this position before. They wanna start playing the piano. And the first thing you encounter is scales and learning notes and learning to read music. And you're just like, uh, forget it, I'm not gonna do it at all. And that's where a lot of people quit. So the very beginning of this entire bundle is just getting you to play some beautiful things right off the bat without any notes, any music theory, any reading music, anything like that. I just want you to have fun playing the piano as quickly as possible. And that is how we start. Now we're gonna go down the whole path and show you some incredible things that you can do that are actually a lot easier than you probably ever thought they were. But if you wanna get that journey started, there's a link in the description below, or if you're on YouTube TV or you just want to scan this QR code, go ahead and do that as well and it'll take you right to the sale. That's running now through the end of the year. And like I said, it's 70% off on a couple of different products, our entire library, as well as a couple different bundles that we set up depending on where you are in your musical journey. And you guys, that is the best way that you can support this channel and what I do here. And if you like my content and you'd like to support me and get something incredibly useful for yourself, that's the best way you can do it. So thank you so much for your support and thank you so much for being here and watching this video. I really appreciate it. Let me know your thoughts on the original Sonic soundtrack in the comments down below, and we will see you in the next video.